Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be talking about my top 15 favourite movies from 1985. Um, well first before I get into the list I just want to say um, just something about my last video. Um, there was a bit of an issue with it and I had to take it down. Um, it was brought to my attention that um, the sound had gone off um, in the last couple of seconds of the video. And I just want to thank anyone who left a comment on that video when it first initially went up. I did manage to read it, but sadly, in order to fix the video, I had to take it down and the comments have disappeared. Um, but the video is back up now. It is in working order. And yeah, I just wanted to make people aware of that. So um, thanks very much if you did leave a comment on that. Um, but yeah, getting back to 1985, um, this is... Possibly the hardest list I've had to compile yet. There were so many cuts I had to make. It was just so hard. Um, really, really um, some tough decisions compiling this list. But I've managed to um, crack it down. And yeah, um, as always, all these movies I've chosen are in accordance with IMDb. Um, they all have a 1985 against their name. This, again, is just my personal list, my personal favourite 15 movies from 85. And, again, I'm going to leave all of my honourable mentions down below in uh, the comments section. Um, sorry, the description. And, yeah, that being said, going to kick it off with number 15. So, coming in at number 15, we have The Legend of Billie Jean. Um... Yeah, this is just a great female empowered movie that I just really enjoy. Um, awesome story, awesome concept um, about this girl, Billie Jean, whose brother gets his, his scooter kidnapped and just wrecked and trashed. And she just wants to go and get the money back for it. So she sees the bully's dad. He harasses her and she, in self-defense, for some whatever reason, the bully's father gets shot. Um, and these group of kids end up going on the run and it's all just a case of misunderstanding their word against theirs and the whole situation just blows out of proportion but it's just such a great fun film uh, the soundtrack in it is great the cast is great I just have a really all round great time with this film and yeah Helen Slater is great in the role Christian Slater is great as her brother in the movie as well and yeah it's all about fair is fair which is a quote from the movie and yeah it's just it's just a brilliant film really really enjoy this one so yeah coming in at number 15 we have the legend of billy jean so coming up next at number 14 we have harrison ford in witness um yeah just a fantastic drama this is the only movie that harrison ford has been nominated for best actor which is just a crying shame um it's a great movie as well. It plays a detective who has to protect this Amish, Amish boy who has witnessed um, a murder. So he ends up having to go and live with the Amish community, having to blend in to try and protect this boy. And obviously the murderers in the movie do come back and it leads to this great confrontation at the end. It's a fantastic drama. Harrison Ford is great in the role. And yeah, it's just got some great acting in it. So yeah, that is my number 14 pick, Witness. So coming up next at number 13, we have Martin Scorsese's After Hours. This is just a movie that really goes unsung, I think, when you talk about Scorsese's films. Um, it's against the type of genre for him, I think, because he's more known for, for gangster movies. But this is just one of those movies that really just captures the annoyance of trying to get somewhere, trying to be somewhere, and everything just gets in the way to stop you. And... Yeah, it just captures all of that so well. I just absolutely love it. It has such a great cast, this movie. Um, such a great setup and concept. I just absolutely love it. It's all about that trying to get somewhere and you just can't. Things, people, scenarios, they all arise, all just to get in your way. And that is the movie, um, in a nutshell. Uh, Griffin Dunn's great in the role probably most famous for playing his, his role in American Werewolf in London, but he is just fantastic in this movie. And like I said, it's one of Martin Scorsese's most underrated films, in my opinion. 
and yeah it's just a great time so yeah that is my number 13 pick after hours so coming in at number 12 we have woody allen's the purple rose of cairo um really good movie really enjoy this one as well um stars mia farrow and jeff daniels pretty much mia farrow's character is pretty much sick of her every day today life she doesn't really get on with her husband anymore so she goes to see this film the purple rose of cairo and falls for the lead character in the movie and the lead character in the movie actually ends up coming out of the screen um to join her and it's all about the relationship between this character and mia farrow's and the movie actually has to grind to a halt all the other characters have to stop because the movie can't continue without him so much so that the actor um playing Jeff Daniels' character, has to come to save the day, really, and try and um, try and set things back to the status quo, bring them back to normal. And it's just a great film, and the ending's really kind of harsh and heartbreaking, but I kind of just love this movie all the same for it. So, yeah, really, really enjoy this one. So, yeah, that is my next pick, The Purple Rose of Cairo. So coming in at number 11, we have two movies. I couldn't decide between the two of these films because I just really enjoy them both and both equally. Um, two great horror comedies in Reanimator and Return of the Living Dead. Um, yeah, Reanimator is a great sci-fi horror movie with comedy injected into it. Um, and Return of the Living Dead is just elevates the, the, the zombie movie to a whole new place in my opinion um it ha adds new rules to the genre and yeah it's just absolutely hilarious and over the top um and yeah reanimate is great it's great with its 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 makeup effects its concept as well about this professor who's trying to see if there's life after death and yeah return of the living dead is just one of the best zombie comedies ever it's it's so much fun tar man is one of the best zombies ever i think in my opinion just the way that guy moves is just so fluid um if, if you've not seen these two movies i highly recommend them they're just they're just so much fun so cheesy and just really really enjoyable so yeah those are my number 11 picks reanimator and Re the return of the living dead so coming in at number 10 we have heaven help us or as it's known here in the, um, Europe, I um, believe it's known as Catholic Boys. Um, but yeah, this is just one of those great coming-of-age movies. Um, follows a group of um, five lads at this Catholic school. And some of them are rebellious. Some of them just want to get on with their day-to-day -day life. But it's all about growing up and integrating. And um, this movie has one of the best villains in it, I think, definitely with one of the Catholic teachers at this school. When you see some of the stuff he does to punish them, it's just so harsh. It's unbelievably painful to watch at times. Um, just how absolutely brutal he is. He batters some of these kids. He just absolutely humiliates them and beats the shit out of them and... When the ending happens in this movie, you are elated. It is just, it's just a joy by the end of the movie. It has one of the best third acts in a movie ever, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. It's got a great score, a great soundtrack, great cast. There's a lot of early roles in this movie by familiar faces. Um, and yeah, it's an absolutely stacked cast as well. It's just a great film. I absolutely love this one. So yeah, coming in at number 10, we have Heaven Help Us. So coming in at number nine, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. Um, yeah, what can I say about this movie? This may not be the best movie ever but for me what this movie does it does really really well it is essentially a quintessential 80s action movie um if someone said to me i've never seen an 80s action movie um describe it to me or show me one i would point them in the direction of this movie because this movie just ticks all of the boxes you want from an over-the-top action movie this is Arnold Schwarzenegger's demo reel, in my opinion. Again, if someone said, I've never seen an Arnie movie, show me what he's all about. 
this is again the movie I would show them because it just showcases everything that the guy was about, everything that his movies were about, I think, in my opinion. Over-the-top action, the one-liners, the hammy villain, all in this movie. It's just an, a great experience and a great time, and I just absolutely have so much fun with this movie. So, yeah, coming in at number nine, we have Commando. So coming in at eighth place, we have Rocky IV. Um, my second favourite Rocky movie growing up as a kid. I just enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Um, this was a great companion for me with Rocky III. Um, I just find this movie so entertaining, so over the top. A time capsule of the 80s. Um, I think it just absolutely showcases the decade wonderfully. And the whole movie is just pretty much one giant montage. Um, fight scene, then... And edited together little mini movie um all just rolled in together and it just makes for one heck of an entertaining movie um the stakes in this movie just absolutely great rocky and drago you know it creates such an insane dyna dynamic between the two of them in such a short space of time um there are stakes there um everything you know, by the time this movie comes to its final act and its its main fight, everything is against Rocky. Um, everything is against him. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing really there for him to latch on to. But when he is in the ring and he just wins the crowd over, it's just, it's incredible. <laughs> it's 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 so incredible and it's so over the top. It's just... It's it's impossible not to like this movie. The score and the soundtrack as well just are wonderful. I, I can't say much more about it. it it's Rocky Four, guys. I just absolutely love it. So, yeah, that is my number eight pick, Rocky Four. So, coming in at number seven, we have Roger Moore's final outing as James Bond in A View to a Kill. Um, this is... Amongst film is not the best James Bond movie. I absolutely get that and appreciate that. But I think this, for me, it's one of my top favourite Roger Moore James Bond movies. I love this movie. Um, I have so much fun with it. I love Christopher Walken as the villain. Um, I love the San Francisco setting of the movie. It's just so much fun and such a joy to look at. Um, yeah, I... The movie's flawed. It definitely does have problems. Roger Moore is probably definitely too old um, for the role at this point. I would have loved to have seen Timothy Dalton do this movie. Um, but yeah, even the finished product, judging it on that basis alone, I do still really like it and I just find it so entertaining. Um, but like I said, it does have its problems. The, the romantic leads in this movie just have absolutely no chemistry together. And yeah, it's it's really awkward at times, but my god, is it fun! It's just such a fun film, um, and that's exactly what I get out of it. So, yeah, coming up at my next spot is A View to a Kill. So coming up at sixth place, we have John Cusack in Better Off Dead. Um, yeah, just one of those great fun high school movies that I just really enjoy. Um, John Cusack plays this character who sort of his girlfriend leaves him for the school jock um, and he challenges him to a, a ski race um, down this mountain in order to try and win her back and he has help from this new um, French exchange student who she's just moved um, in with someone he doesn't really get on with but um, she has her he gets her help um to try and sort of build his car up again, helps to let him to sort of learn to ski better. And yeah, that is the movie. And you can definitely can kind of tell where it's going to go, where it's a little bit predictable, but God, I just loved it. I had so much fun with it. Um, Kurt Armstrong is just a great supporting character in this movie as well. Um, the soundtrack is great. That song, one Way Love is just absolutely fantastic and is so catchy. I love that song. And yeah, I just love this movie. So yeah, it's just an all-round 
blast and such a great time. A little bit abstract as well, but more power to the movie for doing that. So, yeah, that is my number six pick. Better off dead. So coming in at number five, we have another zombie movie, and that is George Romero's Day of the Dead. Um, yeah, just a fantastic way to round off his trilogy. Um, yeah, just... I, I don't really know what, what I can say about this film that hasn't been said already. Um, all I'd say about it is the movie isn't perfect as a movie. It's 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 definitely missing something, stopping it from being an amazing film. But the movie plays to its strengths and it knows what its strengths are, which is the gore effects. The, the designs of the zombies in this movie are top-notch. They look amazing. This is definitely Tom Savini's masterpiece. He didn't get things right with Dawn, but he perfected them with Day. And, yeah, it just is a testament to his work as a makeup artist. Um, the characters are very sort of over the top in this movie. But you enjoy to see the bad ones get their comeuppance. And, yeah, it's just, it's so much fun. Um, the gore is just over the top. Um, and, yeah, if that's the kind of thing you enjoy, you'll absolutely eat up this movie and just have an absolute ball with it. So, yeah. That is my number five pick, Day of the Dead. So coming in at number four, we have Richard Donner's The Goonies. Um, this was one of those movies that I saw on TV growing up, but I never caught the title of it. I always knew what the movie was about. I could recognize the movie instantly, but I just never knew what it was called. And it wasn't until years and years later that I actually found the movie again and found that it was called The Goonies. So... Um, yeah, just really enjoy this one. It is super pumped with adventure. Um, I know a lot of people can't really get into the characters in this movie, and that's absolutely fine. But for me, it really works. I think they've got great chemistry together. I think the start is a bit of a struggle. Um, if you just find those characters a bit annoying, but I think once the movie gets going, it really finds its feet and it just takes you on this absolutely fun adventure. Um, one of the best adventure movies ever, and I just love this film. Great soundtrack and great score as well. So, yeah, just a phenomenal, fun movie. So, yeah, that is my number four pick, The Goonies. So, in third place, taking the bronze medal, we have Tom Holland's Fright Night. One of my all-time favourite comfort horror movies. I just absolutely adore this film. It's my favourite vampire movie of all time. I just enjoy this movie so much. I used to rewatch the DVD of this over and over and over again back when I was a kid. It just absolutely entertained the hell out of me, this film, and I just absolutely enjoy it. Um, the effects in it are great. The soundtrack, chock-a-block full of 80s gems that are just unheard of, and the score is just absolutely hypnotising. Um, it's just an absolutely phenomenal movie. Really, really enjoy this one, and um, I'm going to rewatch it many more times in the future, so... Yeah, that is my number three pick, Tom Holland's Fright Night. So coming in second place and taking the silver medal for me is John Hughes's The Breakfast Club. Um, this was a movie that I didn't enjoy the first time I watched it. I think a lot of the messages and themes in this movie just went over my head. Couldn't grasp them, couldn't get into it. But going back to it on rewatch, something changed and something clicked with me about this film. Um, I just found the characters and it were really, really relatable. Um, some more than others, but yeah, I just thought this was such a well-written film for the time. But I think if this movie was made today, I think all the characters would probably be on their phones. And yeah, it just it just wouldn't work. I think it was definitely a product of the times, but it still holds up for me in 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 that terms and that regards anyway. But yeah, it's just such a well written movie well directed great soundtrack as well who could forget don't you forget about me by simple minds that's one of my favorite songs and it just works so well in this film so yeah just a fantastic fantastic movie so coming in at number two we have john hughes's the breakfast club so that leaves us with one movie left guys um and i think you know which movie it is 
So yeah, this is the one that has taken the gold spot on this list for me. And I don't even really have to say the name of it. Yeah. This is just a fantastic movie. It's as close to perfect as I think you can get with a film. Um, the testament to this movie for me is that this movie has so much rewatch value. And it's two sequels as well. You can just put all three of these movies on and watch them as one giant movie. Um, just Robert Zemeckis just did such a fantastic job when he made this trilogy. With all the help he got as well from the supporting cast and crew. It is just such a wonderful, wonderful film. And yeah, I can't say anything new about this movie that hasn't already been said together. Um, one of the greatest on-screen chemistries ever with Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Um, the two of them just bounce off each other and work so well. Um, in these movies, they're just absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, great score, great soundtrack. Um, Alan Silvestri hit it out of the park. With the music in this film and yeah just an absolute phenomenal phenomenal series of movies just 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 three fantastic films but the first one is regarded as the best and it works on its own so well so yeah just a brilliant brilliant piece of cinema this film can't say much more about it than that so yeah that is my number one favorite movie of 1985 back to the future so, yeah, those are my top 15 favourite movies from the year 1985. So, yeah, go leave the video there, guys, and say thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.